Hello, dear friends. This is Kardec Radio at 11 p.m. We are here live with you to talk about another chapter in the phenomenal book Evolution in Two Worlds, a book that was written by the spirit author Andre Lewis, the same spirit author that uh, wrote the book No Solar and several others. There is a 13 book series named Life in the Spiritual Realm that begins with No Solar and ends with the Life Ozone. The 10th book of the series is the one we're studying, Evolution into Worlds. And this book, um, contrary to what many people think, is not only for scientists, it's for everybody. The goal of the book, as Andre Louis says, is to study our multi-millenary pilgrimage. Okay? Multi-millenary pilgrimage. And to ignite the fire of hope as we ascend to God. These are the words of Andre Louis in the very preface. And we welcome all of you who is joining us okay who is joining us these days so um sunshine is asking us we have been doing this at 11 p.m every day i'm not so sure why it says 9 p.m okay but i will double check okay here for us it's at 11 p.m so Thank you, Sunshine, for asking. Thank you, friends, who are here. So, for us now, it's very, very important to be mindful of the previous chapters. If you're entering here today, remember, watch the previous ones because the study accumulates. In this book, it does. In the preface, we got to know of the goal of the book. First chapter. We got to know the divine plasma in which we are immersed. Okay, the second, the second chapter which we studied yesterday is about the spiritual body, the the vital centers, etc. Today we're talking about how it evolves. So, breathe in and out. Let us say a prayer. Dear God, may we open ourselves more deeply to understand the greatness of life as you created and as you grant us the opportunity of knowing more, greater depth, depth the evolution of ourselves, of our spiritual body. May we feel our connection with you much more strongly and be inspired to fulfill our role as co-creators in your universe. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your wisdom. And so be it. So we begin with a prayer. Okay? Welcome, friends. I'm going to share with you slides. In these slides, we'll be able to see some pictures. So, catch your breath. This is a study. We don't have a million hours, but we have enough time to go and understand how this spiritual body came to be what it is. So let us see. Andre Lewis, Evolution in Two Worlds, Chapter 3, Evolution in the Spiritual Body. So let us begin. He begins by talking to us about the origins of life and he says in order to have a secure idea about the spiritual body we will need to go back somehow to the beginnings of life on earth at the time of the telluric convulsions in which the angelic ministers of the divine wisdom with the supervision of the christ of god laid the foundations of life in the cyclopean body of the bio, of the planet pause for a second observe you know when you go to school and you learn about evolution the beginning of the creation of our planet 
right okay so for us it's important to remember that those phenomena on earth that were happening to form the earth were not happening by themselves alone now spiritism is teaching us that the angelic ministers of the divine wisdom supervised by the christ of god jesus okay laid the foundations of life on earth so when you go to school and study again remember the spiritist view shows to us a more complete version of it all when professor Ipis Barsanufo created the first spiritist school on earth in Sacramento, Minas Gerais, Brazil. He did this. He used to teach elements like this and saying that our earth was being formed according to the highest, highest command, the supervision of our Master Jesus in a teamwork, teamwork fashion with the help of angelic ministers of divine wisdom. So that's why everything happens in so such beautiful harmony. But here in this paragraph, Andre Lewis talks about telluric convulsions. What are they? We need to know. So I'm gonna give you one more slide in which he gives that information to us. He says, you know, by definition, telluric current is an electric current which moves underground or through the sea. Telluric currents result both from, uh, from natural causes and human activity. And the discrete currents interact in a complex pattern. So let us for, not forget the telluric currents here that Andre Luis is talking about is the one of natural causes created by the spirits. Okay, the currents are extremely low frequency and travel over large areas at or near the surface of the earth. So he's talking about that point in time on earth in which the earth was being formed everything was super hot a lot of gases okay everything was the temperature was super high so he talks about more than four billion years ago this is the time frame that andre Louis is telling us and he continues explaining to us that there, at that time, we see the bosom of the earth covered with warm seas, flooded by huge viscous mass spreading in the lap of the primitive landscape. That cosmic gem sheds the intelligent principle in its first manifestations pause 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 that means that while the earth was being processed in its shape in its let's say in its physiology the beauty of these angelic ministers under the supervision of the Christ of God sowed okay the seed of the intelligent principle in that matter so the intelligent principle that came to the earth was not human yet was way before the human level let us continue oh hold on let us continue sorry because he explains to us a little more spiritual workers 
worked upon the celestial monads during millennia, magnetizing values and interchanging them amongst themselves. This process occurred under the action of internal heat and external cold. Okay, so let us look at each other. Okay, let us look at each other here and digest together. What is he saying? What is he saying? So let me go back. More than four billions ago, the earth was hot. They were cooling it down, but it was still very hot. Gases. That's when these spirits brought in what they call celestial monads. It's like seeds. You know, the concept of a monad is like uh, the principle of life. But the intelligent principle. Car uh, Kardec talks about the intelligent principle. And then comes Andre Lewis and gives us another term, celestial monads, which is this spiritual principle, the spiritual seed, the intelligent seed. There. And they work with it. They say that the spiritual workers worked on these celestial monads during millennia. Magnetizing with what? Love. With their thoughts and feelings. And, and playing with the temperatures. Heat and cold. Heat and cold. As such, Andre Louis says, the celestial monads express themselves in the world through the filamentous network of the protoplasm. I'm going to go there. Before I go there, let me rewind the tape a little bit. Remember again, when you studied the origins of the earth in school, at some point you did. Now, bring the spiritist teachings. Visualize the spiritual workers working there. The supervision of the spirits. Everything happening in a very orderly fashion. People never thought about this. But spiritism now reveals it. That's why the book is called Evolution into Worlds. Because the physical in itself cannot explain the greatness of it all. But when we add the spiritual mystery solved, not only that there is the spiritual principle animating, but also the spiritual workers, the divine angel, uh, the angelic ministers, the divine intelligences working, operating on it with love. Think about that. Angelic, divine ministers. These are super loving spirits. So next time you think of the creation of the earth, feel that that heat is love. That heat translates to love. Mm -hmm. So the earth was created out of love. Okay? So let us feel it because this knowledge is beautiful. But if we don't feel, there's no use. Next time you have a child, if you're a teacher, or if you're a parent, or if you're a relative, relay that information to your child. So your child feels that this earth is not by itself just as is. It's under a beautiful supervision, the tutoring, the care of these loving intelligences. Shall we, friends? Breathe in and out and visualize the earth in the process of its formation. And when the celestial monads, the intelligent principles, were brought in and being magnetized by love 
and as such entering the evolution of the years on the earth. This is the history of us. Uh-huh. Yes. Unless you came from another planet. But it happened in the other planet too. Okay? Because that's the evolution as happens. I mean, in general terms across the board. So let's go back and study a little more. Are you feeling the love? I hope you're feeling the love. Because it's clear to us that these spirits are not kidding about how much they love us. Spiritual workers who worked upon the celestial monads during millennia magnetizing values. Uh huh. When you go to question 621 of the spirit's book, in the good spirits told Kardec that the laws of God are written in the conscience and they are reinforced by the loving spiritual workers. Okay? So he continues by telling us another information. As such, the celestial monads express themselves in the world through the filamentous network of the protoplasm from which the organized existence of the globe derivate. Centuries of silent activity go by successfully. Successfully. So first of all, what is protoplasm? You may be asking, so let me show it to you. Don't worry, don't go away, stay there. Let us work on this together because this knowledge to become a pure spirit, we need to know it all. So today's the day we're giving one step ahead, closer together towards our achievement of being a pure spirit one day, okay? So protoplasm, what is it that Andrea Luis is talking about? He's talking about the living content of a cell that is surrounded by a plasma membrane. So protoplasm is what is inside of the cell. So let's go back and see what he meant. He said that the protoplasm is the first mechanism through which the celestial monads express themselves. And they stay there multiplying themselves for centuries. Centuries. Okay? In this single expression. And then he talks about the next step. The birth of the plant kingdom. He says... From the protoplasm, centuries, that spiritual principle, and I'll make a pause and look at you in the eye to make sure we are on the same page. Now, let's look at our, each other eye to eye. You know, this is my shirt today, right? It's blue. This is the body. But let's say this is me, Manis, and this is my shirt. Today I'm using a blue shirt. Apparently, I have been using for the last three, four days. Blue shirts, okay? Just coincidence. And then, why am I saying this? Vanessa is Vanessa. In a blue shirt, it looks this way, that way. Why am I saying this? Because that spiritual principle is going to close itself in matter. So first, it's the protoplasm, the cell. Viruses, okay? And then we're gonna see the next clothing they are gonna use. As this spiritual principle evolves, he uses different clothes. That's what we're talking about. So you're gonna hear names and names and names of the clothing they are using, okay? So, imagine a beautiful spiritual principle vibrating like a divine flame. 
the celestial monad created by God and now dressing up in a cell simple very simple not much of experience ignorant quote unquote and then next evolving centuries multiplying dying let's say quote unquote reincarnating another cell multiply all the movement and now let's go back to the slide okay now let's go back viruses appear says andra lewis and with the viruses come the primal field of existence composed of nuclear proteins and globulins offering suitable climate for the intelligent principles or the fundamental monads they stand out of the living substance through microscopic centers of positive force stimulating the chirokinetic division Oh, Vanessa, please, what is this, Andrea Lewis? Okay, breathe in and out. And I say this purposefully because when we get confused, we reset. Shake your head. Reset. Breathe in and out again from the protoplasm. Okay? The leaving part of a cell. Viruses. And then in there, the clothing. So next time you think of a virus, of course, protect yourself. But remember, they are living beings too. And they are the clothing of spiritual principles. So send them love. Hmm? Send them love. Though they need to recycle so we can continue our job here. So here he's saying that in that living substance it's going to the spiritual monads is going to stimulate the movement of cell division that's what chirokinesis means the replication of the dna through mitosis and then different cells multiplication of cells cell division Aha! Uh -huh. Is, isn't that what viruses do best? Oh, yes. That's what viruses do best. Right? And that's where we learn it. Now, think about your physical body today. If you didn't know intrinsically how to subdivide the cells, you wouldn't have a human body. So, thank God that experience happened so strongly so we can learn how to divide ourselves i'll say this figuratively speaking andrea lewis then continues okay hold on he says oops okay the rudimentary bacteria Okay, he says to us, the rudimentary bacteria, and look at the picture of the bacteria, huh? that's how they are. The rudimentary bacteria become evident, whose species are lost in the deep foundations of evolution, plowing minerals in construction of the soil, divided by numerous races and groups shaping by asexual reproduction the primeval cells which are responsible for the outbreaks of plant kingdom in its beginning millennia upon millennia come and go so viruses bacteria asexual reproduction which means reproduction without another person I mean, another being, sorry, another being. So, by itself, the chirokinesis, the cell division. 
and then millennia after millennia learning this process. Now, everybody's in a rush, right? Nowadays, we're like, oh my gosh, I need to be perfect today. And God, by the study we're doing, is showing to us not in a rush do your best but take it easy patience huh it's part of the plan be patient okay so you may be asking but is, is that an exercise for the next 24 hours yes you got it that's our exercise mentor joseph is asking us to do that exercise this next day you're gonna leave think about this in the next 24 hours if it took millennia billions of years to get where we are why we're losing patience and we don't lose something that we have in that regard but let's say why so let's be patient huh? oh but i wish everything were this way me too but it's not gonna happen why because we need to make effort and repetition sometimes in the same task until we master it. So this study today, as you can see, centuries passed by, millennia passed by, and Andre Luis is going to reveal to us how long it took from that moment of the celestial monad to where we are at human level. So, Mentor Joseph is asking us, practice patience. Breathe in and out and say, I'm going to get there. Affirm it to yourself. Let us affirm to ourselves. I am progressing. That's our affirmation. And I'm writing down so I can practice as well. Not that I don't, but I want to recall it clear cut. I am progressing, I am progressing, I am progressing, like the celestial monads, which is my essence, my divine nature. I am progressing, let's take it easy, be patient, move forward, okay? Many people nowadays are in the rush, that's not good. Let's walk surely steadily there are things we cannot change and only time can change so believe that we are under the law of progress it's a law you didn't create it neither did i so just affirm to yourself i am in synchronicity with the law of progress and i am progressing sure thing that we are progressing okay back to our study let's go friends Courage to learn about the beauty of life. Now, he says to us, from viruses, beautiful clothing, to bacteria. Now he says, in the bacteria and in the cell, the intelligent principle is sustained by the resources of life, constituted 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 in the protoplasmic fluid inside of the cell okay now the intelligent principle is nourished up in chlorophyll which shows an atom of magnesium in each molecule preceding the formation of blood through which the intelligent principle will be nourished in the animal kingdom Pause again. What is he talking about? Observe. He's inserting another element. Chlorophyll. That is intelligent principle. That is using the beautiful clothing of the cell in the bacteria. Is nourishing itself in chlorophyll. Which has magnesium in it. And that is the rehearsal of what is going to be the formation of our blood in the future, in the animal kingdom. Okay? Now think about this. Chlorophyll depends 
Hmm? Chlorophyll has a direct, the chemistry of it all depends on sunlight, right? Mm -hmm. Magnesium is the atom that our Deandre Lewis is highlighting. Nowadays, observe science, orthomolecular science, medicine is reminding us about the importance of these molecules. And they are saying that several diseases are occurring because we lack magnesium. Huh? And magnesium, magnesium, okay, and you can eat, I know, you can eat um, pumpkin seeds, right? Pumpkin seeds to acquire a good amount of magnesium. And you may be asked, why do I need it? Blood. So we're talking about the elements from the primitive that accumulate. We learn about it and we continue in the animal and the human kingdom. Okay? All right. Now, he continues by telling us that times go by without haste. Observe how many times in this chapter Andre Luis is emphasizing about the flow of time and without rush. It's not by chance, okay? It's not by chance that our dear friend here is mentioning the fact that there is time, no rush. So why are you rushing? Impatient, nervous, anxious. Let us surrender, shall we? Yeah. Put your hand in your heart and tell yourself everything's fine. Everything is fine. I am progressing. Everyone is progressing. I am in synchronicity with the law of progress. Breathe in and out. Activate your sympathetic nervous system. Relax so you can think clearly about the things to do and no rush. Time goes by, says Andrea Lewis, without haste, slowly moving in the cradle of humanity. And the swimming algae appear nearly invisible with their fluctuous tails, flexuous tails, circulating in the body of water, dressed in cellulosic membrane, and keeping themselves with mineral debris. These algae have extreme sensitivity and motility as ways in which the single-celled monad has evolved stands the upper stage. So from the virus, the rudimentary bacteria, acquiring magnesium through chlorophyll, then activating this motility, the movement and sensitivity because of the sunlight, then these spiritual monads, the celestial monads, are evolving. Now they are no longer, no longer simple. They are a little more complex, evolving. They already know how to divide and now expanding in features. So at the end of the day, Andrea Lewis is telling us about features that we acquire as we progress. Okay? So now visualize the celestial monad in the first stages of the protoplasm. Viruses, cell division, rudimentary bacteria, a little tail, and then chlorophyll, magnesium, and then sensitivity to light increases. Motility is expanded because of the flexuous tails. And then this spiritual principle is becoming fancier and creating new features that will allow greater 
expansions of experiences and opportunities. He continues. Breathe in, huh? Embryonic feelings and instincts. Who says this? Andrea Lewis. Oh my gosh. He says, however, they are still plants, he says, which to date they exist on Earth as filters of primary outcome of the intelligent principles, constantly expanding. However, they are super evolved plants. He's talking about the algae in the domains of embryonic feelings and instincts as the magnesium in the chlorophyll remains as a testament to the species. So keep this expression in mind. Eh? Embryonic feelings and instincts. Why? Because they are sensitive to light and they already move, have motility, the instinct. So he's talking about embryonic stages of our feeling. How beautiful is this, my friends? Huh? Everything begins so many billions of years before we entered the human race. He continues, talking about specifically the green algae. Succeeding them in order, the green algae of pluricellular features now from one cell to many cells. They emerge with a new nut list to be observed, which inaugurates the sexual reproduction. Aha! Now the exchange between algae and establishes vigorous shocks in which death appears in the spheres of struggle, causing continuous metamorphosis that will endure in the course of ages in deep dynamism, thus keeping the building up of the forms of the future. I know it's a lot of wording, but keep the highlights. Huh? Many cells now. Remember, the celestial beings, huh? the spiritual principles, dressed up in the protoplasm, the viruses, rudimentary bacteria, now the algae, especially the green algae, that allow many cells, exchange of reproductive elements. You see how beautiful. And then again he talks about ages in deep dynamism and rehearsing like effort. He talks about effort here. Repetition, struggle he talks about. It's not only human. It's a, in every kingdom there is a struggle, but it's not a bad thing. It's about exercises for the spiritual principle. Okay? And then he says, the green algae, the green algae, let me share something with you. They are organisms, eukaryotic, that follow a reproduction cycle called alternation of generations. Just so we understand why he talked about this um, sexual reproduction. Science validates everything that Andrew Lewis is saying. Continue. This is pretty much how um, this sexual reproduction happens in the algae, as they call the alternation of generations, okay? The exchange of reproductive elements and generating new life. Now it's not only mitosis, but also meiosis. So the beauty of it all will tell us that it expands to this specific type of in the plant kingdom that will be evolving according to the evolution of the celestial monad. Now he's entering the first species. Okay, he says, later we note the internship of the celestial monad in the arthropods. What is this? 
the bee, the, 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 the animals, the bugs, okay, and others. So from the plant kingdom in the first species, and we're talking about the ancient times as well, he continues by telling us, just so we know, an arthropod is an invertebrate animal that has an external skeleton, like scorpions, okay? A segmented body and joint appendages. They are the insects, the spiders, the crustaceans, etc. So these are the beings that we're talking about, okay? And Andrea Lewis will tell us about the magnificent part of it. Because he says they have this chitin, which is an element in their external skeleton, okay, that protects and has nitrogen molecules in it. Why we're saying this? Because we're talking about the rehearsal of complex systems like our blood system and that's precisely what Andre Lewis is going to tell us about. The arthropods differ, they are different in blood patterns. They present an atom of copper in their molecular structure. Remember, pause for a second, we talked about magnesium before in the algae because of chlorophyll. Now, in this next stage of evolution, the complexity go to another level. There is an atom of copper, okay? And Andrea Lewis explains to us that that is a rehearsal of what's going to happen in the formation of the blood later in the higher animals. How beautiful is this? Okay, the condensation of the forces that fuel the vehicle of intelligence in the empire of the soul, which is blood. Blood is the condensation, sorry, because that's in Ray Louis's own words, blood is the condensation of our forces the fuel, the vehicle of intelligence in the empire of the soul. I'm going to put a pause and look at you quickly before we move on to the last part of this chapter, okay? Let us just meditate on this. You may be asking, but yes, I didn't sign up for this much science. Breathing and out, everything is fine. He's talking about this. Let us work on this together. The celestial monad, the vibrating spiritual principle, doing internships in matter, simple internships to more complex. So, from the protoplasm, which is the contents of the cell, to the next steps, which is the rudimentary bacteria, viruses. Learn how to divide the cells. That's what bacteria and viruses do best. They divide themselves. They divide themselves and we go crazy with the infections, right? They are doing their job. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, they are under the command of higher minds. So we need to think about how we are attracting those clusters of viruses, bacteria that multiply in us. Our body has a lot of them around and the environment as well. And they are under the command of the minds of everyone. Now, he says that as this celestial monad is nourished while being in this state, then a molecule okay, of chlorophyll comes nourishes it because it it brings the sunlight in magnesium is part of it magnesium is vital for us nowadays as well for us as humans but that's where its job begun later the green algae 
is the sexual reproduction, new features of motility and sensitivity, embryonic feelings and instincts. The next step, the arthropods, animals, animal kingdom. And then what is vital for us? Blood. So Andre Lewis, in this book, and in the book, Mechanisms of Mediumship, is going to teach us that blood is more important than we can imagine. Because through our blood, the forces of the spirit, the vitality, flows. So that's why it's very important for us to learn how to nourish ourselves and to keep our blood vitalized. Okay? Here he's going to talk about this atom of copper that exists in these arthropods, these animals, that later is going to develop into hemoglobin. Now, that's where we are. Let me go back to the slide and give that information to you. Okay? Let's go back. Here we have. It's so beautiful. He says, copper into hemoglobin. This denotes the relationship of inalienable individuations of the spirit in the mutations of the form that meets the relentless progress of divine creation. Copper is an essential element for the formation of newborn infants they have higher concentration of copper than adults. Did you know it? No, right? So this is the beauty. Look at this. This is our, our red blood cell and inside of it, the oxygen molecule, okay, that is carried by hemoglobin. This is beautiful. It's inside of us. It is inside of us. So that copper back then is going to develop itself, be more complex to the level of becoming what we call the hemoglobin. And we're talking about millennial evolution. We're talking about effort, recapitulation, and expansion. Effort, recapitulation, progress. Action and reaction, right? Great. Next, he says to us, right here. The spiritual monad does its internships in the marsupials, right? Marsupials like the kangaroo, the, cr the Cretaceous of the medial you seen. I'm going to show you pictures of it all. And now he talks about many names. All scientific names, but when you're surprised, just think. Chico Xavier about be it as mediums in a mediumistic meeting, psychographing this complexity. Mamma mia, they were super mediums. <laughs> in the rhinocerontidae, yeah, the rhinos, the cerviti, the deers, the antilopians, yes, the horses, equity, the canidae, the dogs. Proboscides and lower anthropodenial of the Miocene. It exterior, the celestial monad exteriorizes itself in the noblest mammals of the Pliocene. He's talking about the eras of evolution on Earth prior to the era today. Precursors of the current fauna of the Earth. And it reaches the Pithecanthropoids of the Quaternary Era, which precedes the embryonic Paleolithic civilizations. Pictures for you of everything he says, okay? All these animals. So every time you see these animals, think they are being internships, beautiful clothing for the experience of an evolving intelligent principle. Should we love nature? or not, we must, right? I think the love of nature grows stronger when we read the book of evolution.
two worlds. These are the other animals, the Cerviti, the Antilope, the Equidi, which are the horses of ancient times, and later on, foxes, elephants, and uh, chimps, and all these eras of learning experiences. Okay? So, what does this mean, Vanessa? That means that we're almost at the end of this chapter. Hold on a second. It talks about learning. Throughout the above mentioned internships, the intelligent principle or the celestial monad poured from the spiritual plane into the physical one underwent the coarser sieves of adaptation and selection, assimilating multiple values of organization, reproduction, memory, instinct, sensation, perception, and self-preservation, penetrating well the ways of the most complete and laboriously gained in the tracks or eras of inaugural e reason. What does he say? Okay, so do not be surprised. Let's look at each other here huh? and think. He's saying, you see how Andre Luis is summarizing because he's not explaining in greater depth in that regard each and every species, how it happens. He's just giving us some elements. And he's saying, the internships in matter through the different species to gain what? Memory, he says here. To gain what? Memory, reproduction, organization, instinct, sensation, perception, self-preservation. So these are sacred kingdoms. We need to learn to respect nature and see with two eyes in two worlds. The animals, even the spider, the bug, the cockroach, they are evolving. They are evolving. So we need to appreciate it. They are learning something, some of these features in those phases. It's a sacred, evolving experience. No wonder, as we evolve, we become more respectful of nature. Because we understand that it's much more than the eyes can see. Let's go back to wrap up this chapter, okay? We're almost there. Now, the beauty huh, of it all. Let's see. What is he saying? He's saying to us. We cannot confine the divine principle. Okay. To simply the physical experience. Once through birth and death of the form, it undergoes constant changes in two planes in which it manifests itself. So, you know, science often talks about the missing links. And Andrea Lewis is going to talk about this. He says, of course there's a missing link. Because this evolution doesn't happen only in the physical body. It happens also in the spiritual and he continues. This is the reason why various links of evolution are beyond the research of naturalists, because they represent stages of fragmentary consciousness outside of the carnal field in itself, in extra physical regions in which such incomplete consciousness goes preparing its subtle vehicle, then classified as human protoform due to the degree of evolution 
in which it is. So if you go to the Spirit's book by Kardec, we are going to find the very same when we learn about planets and in the Gospel according to Spiritism, when you go to chapter 3, it talks about planets and the different uh, stages of evolution, the primitive planets. Exactly. But there are other planets that serve the purpose, as Kardec teaches us in the Spirit's book, that there are planets that exist, worlds that exist to be this phase, different phase of evolution that not necessarily happen in one dimension. It may happen at the spiritual dimension. Okay? That's why he continues by telling us. That is how the being travels from the single-celled organisms to complex organisms in which intelligence disciplines the cells being at its service. Remember, mental body, spiritual body, physical body. Mental body, spiritual body, physical body. Again, mental body, spiritual body, physical body. Okay? So, he's summarizing as he wraps up the, the chapter for us by saying, the bottom line of it all, in these laws of action, reaction and renewal, he says, and I'm going to read to you, <clears throat> he says to us, we are acquiring the nervous stimulus, the immune defense, constru constructing the crown center, in the brain and in expressions in millions and millions of years with the aid of sublime powers that guide the march. Okay? So he says to us, it took us, it took us 1.5 billions of years to reach the age of reason. 1.5 billions of years. So, Is that the end of the chapter? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. That's what it is for today. 1.5 billions of years. What does that mean? Today, the lesson is patience. Andrea Louis says, this book is to console us. If you're suffering from anxiety, if you're suffering from impatience, remember, take your time. Tell yourself, I am progressing. We are all progressing. I am in synchronicity with the law of progress. That's it. When we are in synchronicity, everything flows. It takes its natural course to happen. But believe, you're progressing. I am progressing. That's the bottom line of the chapter today, my friends. When we come back tomorrow, we're going to study another chapter. Okay? Yes, it's a super wow. Right, Dulce? Super wow. And the chapter that we're going to study next is as beautiful as this one. And it's going to talk about how we learned the things that are automated in our spiritual and physical bodies. You want to know? Come back tomorrow. We're going to talk about this. How we learned these automated features. Your heart is beating and you don't need to think. You're breathing. You don't, you don't need to think. How did you acquire these acquisitions, these features? Come back tomorrow and we're going to get to know more about it. Okay, friends? So beautiful. Right, Daisy? Right, Rihanna? And so... Today it's the wow chapter. I agree with you. So patience because it took us 1.5 billions of years to go from the celestial moment in its first internship to the age of reason. So take it easy. Amazing grace, Carol. You're right. Many blessings, my friend. Lots of patience. Trust in our progress. Until tomorrow.